Hi guys, welcome to Nikola Studies Chess with one and all international master Elizabeth Betts. Hi. Well, I have to admit to being more than a little bit jealous because Ellie is in Madeira and... No, I'm not in Madeira, not in Portugal. I'm actually in Spain and the Canaries on Lanzarote, well, the island. Let me put it this way, somewhere warm. So. Yes, somewhere very warm, yeah. <laughs> All right, so welcome here. Thank you, Warren Crowder. It's very good to see you. Yes, let's get hydrated. Agreed. All right, so uh, uh, Lizzie is preparing for her OTB tournament. So it's uh, it's a pretty good place to have uh, such a preparation. Anyway. That's true. <laughs> All right. Hey, Mayonnaise, it's very good to see you. Hello, Kimplet. Uh, thank you for being here. It's very good to see you guys here. And uh, this is a warm-up position. Uh, and I'm black, right, Lizzie? Yes, you are black. And your goal is to estimate knight takes e5, d takes e5, and bishop takes e5. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right, so the we are estimating here take on the e5, de takes five, bishop e5. Okay, mm -hmm. I have to admit that I am a little worried about the sequence because I'm activating this bishop on a3. And yeah. But you get the pawn. I do get the pawn, yes. Um, however, my not uh, you know then i have the pawn on d5 which is attacked three times mm -hmm. and defended only twice yes so hmm. all right so basically white can reclaim that pawn immediately right well by sacrificing the exchange sacrificing the exchange which does not work but uh, White can play something along the lines of rook c1. Okay, but after rook c1, let's say, then actually black has time to, for example, go bishop d6. Yeah. Okay. And suddenly I think actually um, black is doing fine. All right. Hey, Chess Lions, it's very good to see you guys. And, you know, by way of introduction, uh, thank you, Uber. Uwuber mentioned, thank you for the follow, that's very greatly appreciated. Quick shout out to Chess Alliance, Daniel Davar, who is a dear friend of mine. He is uh, streaming and organizing quite a few Lee Chess tournaments. And please give him a follow and a shout out. He's also a mod here, it's very good to see him. And for those of you who haven't been seen, been seen this stream before this is nicola learns chess with international master elizabeth pecht i think uh, lizzie doesn't need an introduction she is also uh, you know streaming herself can we give uh, chess lines can we give lizzie a shout out and there is also an ellie command in in our chat basically this is a weekly fixture on this channel and welcome everyone all right, so after after takes takes bishop e5, uh, white doesn't have any checks. He has that capture for uh, in an exchange of sacrificing the exchange. He has this monstrous bishop on a3. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and black is a pawn down, but that pawn, a uh, pawn up, but that pawn is this isolated pawn on e5 on d5. Uh, in exchange for that pawn, white has a little bit of initiative. Yes. So the question is like after bishop takes e5, what actually about the most crucial variation, which is not rook c1, but Nicola? Mm, good question. <laughs> All right. So what's the most crucial variation here? Um, all right, so we, we really can't take on d5 and we, the, the, 
knight on c3 is undefended. Yes, but okay. I mean, what we should obviously always calculate is the capture variation. Let's assume knight takes d5. Okay, knight takes d5, knight takes d5, bishop takes d5, bishop a1. Right. Well, bishop. That's a, a little bit dangerous. It's very dangerous. After knight takes d5, which is not even actually given in my lines because it's probably too bad yeah no i don't like that all right so let's assume we do knight d5 bishop a1 yes bishop a1 is the most logical okay. sequence to calculate all right and if we here is the most, yeah, here is the critical sequence, at least I think. All right, so the critical sequence appears to be this, um, and I'm gonna show this. So, takes on e5, mm -hmm. takes on e5, bishop a5, knight d5, bishop a1, yes. queen a1. And queen a1, yes. Now after queen a1, what is the only um, way here for black to continue? Uh, if black take black can actually take the knight on d5, but that's followed by queen g7, and the rook is in trouble because it can't go to f8. Well, after knight takes d5, you have two candidate moves. You have um, bishop takes d5, and you have queen takes g7. Which of those two we can actually rule out? Um, I don't, I, I prefer to take on g7. But then I have queen f6. You have queen f6. Ah, and f6. I, so, so I need, we need to, then we need, we need to inter interject take on d5. Yes, yeah, so I have to play queen takes d5. And then queen g7 is dangerous. And then queen g7. Now the question is after queen g7, what candidate moves does black have in this position? Okay. Um, rook is under attack. There are no checks. Um, there are no captures. Uh, there is no protected i mean it's basically two rooks and a and the queen but we have a rook up currently for black but we have a problem with our king correct so um all right so if we play king e7 we cannot play king e7 as because long as of the rook bishop on a3 we uh, uh, king d7. Then I will take the rook back on h8 and actually like... Uh, you're, up a uh, you're up a pawn. Or well, and we have a very... You're up a position. Yeah. Yes, we are up a position. That's yeah. more precise, yeah. I mean, what can black do here? Um, well, I mean, should, black should try to create threats otherwise it's very difficult okay, yeah so the if all there is a mating threat with bishop h3 yes very good hey Dirk, it's very good to see you welcome to the stream it's very good to see, very good to see you here okay so bishop h3 is the best candidate move mm -hmm. and now the question is what is white doing good question there is a mate on g2 is dangerous Mm -hmm. Obviously. The and first there, question, yes. How we can stop it. And the only stop I see is to take on e to push f3, right? But after f3, I mean, like, uh, black can simply castle on side and has a rook up. Yeah. Or, yep. Yeah, that's the problem. So we need to have a tempo, so we need to play e4 first. 
Okay, we have to first decide whether we can take on h8 with a check or not. Yeah, we can. And after king d7? Uh, right. Well, the queen is attacked. There is a mating threat on g2 mm -hmm. that we cannot stop. Mm -hmm. Okay, and with the queen on... With a king on d7 and a queen on d5, I don't have any uh, don't have any checks. Yes, so queen takes h8, we can rule out. Yeah. Now let's go to your move e4, right? Yeah. After e4, what is um, Plague's response? Okay, there is no there are no checks apart from the check on c checks on c5, which is bad because of bishop in a3, and there is a check on d4, which is also bad because queen from queen defends that field. I mean, we don't have any checks because of pawn is on f2. I mean, the pawn is on f2, though. Sorry. Um, all right, but e4. Mm -hmm. Um. We have two candidate moves after e4 for black. We have queen d3 and we have queen takes e4. Yes, if we play queen d3, we no longer have a mating threat. No, we have a mating threat. We threat queen queen because the, the pawn on, because queen f1 is threatened. Okay. Yes. Fair enough. Now what? All right. After queen d3, mm -hmm. we have a problem that rook is under attack. It's not being defended, and uh, we don't have any checks. Hey, Logistan, thank you for the subscribing for tier one for four months. Thank you, my friend. Actually, we have two checks. We have a check on e5, and we have a check on h8 for white after queen d3. Yeah, and we don't really want to allow those checks, or do we? No, okay, the question is, like, Black has two options, queen d3 or queen takes e4, but the question is, after queen d3, does white have a win with any of those two checks? Well, after after queen d3, mm -hmm. the line goes uh, queen e5. Yes, king d7. And then there is a check on there is a check on e7. Very good. King, let's say to c c8. And then there is a there is a rook c1. Yes, king b8. And then bishop um there there is a there are checks on d there are two checks on d6 which look pretty scary if we take it with a bishop yes king a7 uh, king a7 and then bishop bishop can give a check on c5 and king b8 and there should be a mate there somewhere there is a mate well, on c7 somewhere there was a mate actually easier than bishop d6 check there was queen c7 check and bishop c5 mate. c5 okay gotcha so that means we can rule out the move queen d3 and we have to check the move queen takes e4 yeah all right so if we if uh, queen takes an e4 mm -hmm. um the mate is still threatened yes uh we still can we can actually we don't have a check on e5 anymore which is the big difference between two moves but we have now some other checks given because a queen left the d file uh yes so all right so what check do we have we can take on h8 mm -hmm. king d7 king d7 and now we have rook d1. Mm -hmm. King c7. And after that, we can't take on a8, obviously, but we can um, we can give a check on d6. 
with a bishop, but then after bishop d6 check, actually you run out of checks, let's say, in case of king b6. Okay. Uh, don't I? I don't have queen d4. Okay. Then I will exchange and I will be fine and surviving. Yeah, okay. So we need to bring queen into action sooner in this sequence. Yes, so after king c7, what is the other clear I candidate? queen c3. Yes, and let's say after queen c3, only move is king b8, otherwise it's a mate on c5. Yeah, um, and after that, we have bishop d6. Yes, after bishop d6, there's king a7. And isn't, uh, I, st I have queen c5. b6. Okay, and then queen c7 is... Queen b7. <laughs> ah, gotcha. That's the trick. Okay, I see that. All right. So what am I? What am I missing here? Mm -hmm. Let me remove the arrows. Okay. Actually, you got super far, which is impressive. I mean, Topolov was also like solving this exercise. He got that far after King B8, and now he missed the key move. Actually, yeah. And by the <laughs> way, guys, this is a uh, this is warm up. <laughs> yeah, a super GM and a world championship candidate. Actually, Topolov was a world champion at some point, wasn't he? Yes, he was. I mean, like I gave a seminar with him in Gibraltar and I set this exercise up for the students and he was trying to solve it himself. And he was like, after King B8, he was like puzzled because he understood that eventually there's Queen B7 and it's not mate. And actually, like he missed after King B8 or like eventually he found the right move here. But this is a key moment, actually. Okay, so what am I missing? All right, let me let me redo this in my mind. We we have taken, taken, taken. We have taken on d five, um, taken on uh, taken on a one, queen a one, take on d five, bishop on d five, queen d five, queen g seven, bishop on h three is the sequence. Uh, then. We have queen on, we have we have a queen on g seven, uh -huh. and we are now looking at e four. E four, okay. So e four. Actually, like, takes can tell you, yeah, Nicolas, just in this moment, sorry. Um, e yeah. four was not spotted by the entire German national team, <laughs> so you're already like doing much better <laughs> than my teammates. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> lush, uh, light, uh, uh, yeah, a light warm up, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> all right, queen e4, queen e4. Uh, we have given the check on h8. Uh, it's uh, queen, uh, we the king d7 was played, mm -hmm. and then rook d1 check mm -hmm. yes uh, and king c7 yes queen c3 check and queen king c3 D8. check and king's uh king c7 right king uh, no king b8 because king b8 okay yes all right all right then we gave a check on c3 with a uh, with a queen so yes all right. So what we have is we have a queen on uh, we have a queen on c three, rook on d one, bishop on a three, queen on d five, and king is on c seven. And... Queen on e four. Yeah. yeah. Bishop a three and king is on b eight now. King is on b eight now. And how do we mate that king? Um, all right. And the problem is if we give a check on c five. There is this b6, queen b7. All right. So, um, all right. So we basically don't have a rook on c1. Because there is still a mating threat. And the question is, Nicola, if you understand in your whole mm -hmm. sequence, b6 and queen b7 is a defense. And here currently there is a mating threat. We can start to look also for prolactical moves, which may yeah. help. 
Yeah, we can we do the quick. Hey, Fap MMM, thank you for the follow, my friend. That's very great. We appreciate it. All right. But we can stop that mating threat with uh, F3, right? Yes, and F3 is a key move because after F3, the queen has to leave the diagonal and the whole position collapses. And after F3, of course, you will not be able to calculate all the queen moves, but the thing is like queen E2, for example, to create another mating threat on G2 doesn't work because there's because no more. Because now there is no queen B7. Yeah, so let's uh, just go to this moment. Sure. Yeah. Okay, e4 is of course a move which you may easily miss in your calculation. Just to distract the queen from the d file. And here, once again, the problem is about this, which looks like a mate that after b6 there is queen b7. Yeah. And for this reason, here in this position, the silent move f3 is F3 very is strong. You kill the only mating threat. Queen e2 now doesn't work as it will really end up mate then in it's the same mate story. There's no queen b7. Yeah. Yes, and after f3, actually, um, in the game analyze, they give queen c6, but now um, white gets clear advantage after queen e5 check, king a7, and rook d6. And then there is bishop c5 coming. Yeah. So that means basically knight takes e5 is not a good option. <laughs> that was the idea about this exercise. <laughs> Actually, Atke and Michal Shishin gave this exercise to us and the women's national team back in 2011. And OK, I got until the moment e4. And I mean, even until like king b8, but I missed f3 actually in this sequence. OK. Very Light, <laughs> light warm up, sure. Okay. Yeah. No, in, in all honesty, just uh, just on a pure, you know, even without calculation, and obviously we need to calculate. I'm not saying we shouldn't, but that just looks too dangerous. Yes, I mean, from the intuitional point of view, like actually, you would never do it. I mean, I made a mistake. I once gave it to my students, and I said, like, would you take on e5? And then they just said no. And I said, like, but this is not the call you should calculate. No, so. F, uh, in uh, uh, noticing F3 in such a long sequence is very tricky. So, he, Of course, I mean, like, it was also tricky for Mr. Topalo. So All right, <laughs> it's a tricky you. thing. All right, so. Let's go to some techniques and endings. We hadn't been doing that for... Okay. Quite a while. This is also some kind of warm up position before we get into a little bit more complicated stuff. All right, so this, let me guess, this is something that Magnus missed. No, this okay. is actually like, um, I can tell you, it's a very old game. Okay. Let me see who it is. Actually, no, it's not written here, but it's like some old games which we know from Rubinstein Tarash. I don't know which. Okay. Who of the guys played, but it's uh, from it's, this time. Am I white or black? You are black and you should make the right move here. Okay. All right, so material here is equal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any checks. I have this capture on B3. Mm -hmm. um, All right, so candidate moves is you by just the pure definition of this is, you know, capture on B3. Mm -hmm. um, the problem with that capture I'm thinking loud is that this bishop on E6 is actually stronger than its counterpart on E2. It controls the whole uh, light square complex around here, D5, F5, and so on. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Sorry, that's not the one. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, so that's one candidate move. Another candidate moves are to look for pawn challenges. And we actually have two pawn challenges here. We can push f5 or we can push d5. 
the problem is that if we do that then we are kind of releasing that white light squared bishop from captivity in other words for any kind of an exchange that bishop is going to become stronger uh, -huh. uh take when you're on b3 doubles the white spawns but opens the c file so that trade-off is something to consider um, it's remotely possible to do to take on b3 then play knight e6 and park myself on d4 which is a very strong outpost for the knight okay i really cannot play this like a king's indian thing and push f5 and then f4 because i don't have a queens there are no queens on the board on the other hand uh, that might be a good space grab uh, it's uh, interesting position Actually, I can tell you when, like, for example, like experienced players look at this position, they know the solution in one second. What yeah, to do. Yeah, of course. It. Sure. This is like a pattern recognition for positional play. And here, actually, um, we had a similar position in a different way with the Botwini game when we exploited the square on E4, if you remember that. Yes, I remember that. Sure. And I told you, like, once you have such a square and you cannot be, like, driven out of the square, this is just, like, a positional suicide for the other side. All right. So, basically, what I'm hearing from you is you want me to take on b3 and play knight e6? Yes. Because, actually, like, after taking okay. on b3 and knight e6, um, it is, objectively speaking, already game over. Yep. Because... The knight will park on d4. The c file doesn't matter. We can block it with c6. But the knight will be so much stronger than the bishop that right. actually it will be the ruler of the entire game. And as a kind of, uh, let's say, rule, I could just um, advise you whenever you are able to exploit a central square and you cannot be driven sure. out by any piece, then you can be sure that this dominance is in such a big way that from the positional point of view, we can actually already speak from game over. Okay, fair enough. Hey, Opfushak, my dear friend, thank you for joining us. No, that, that makes perfect sense. And for the record, I did consider that uh, sequence, so it's fine. All right. Okay, rook c1 was played. Now c6, prophylactically against the hanging pawn. b4, now knight d4, and bishop d1. Now the question is, Nicola, how shall we proceed? Because, okay, objectively speaking, we have already one weakness created, which is the weak square on d4, and let's say also the pawn on d2. But you know that sometimes one weakness may not be enough to win yeah. the game. So we should try to provoke another weakness. And what do you think? What is easier to do this on the queen side or on the king side? Okay, well, it's probably it's easier to provoke it on the king side. I that is think. a question, actually, because, okay, the knight is on d4, not f4. And actually, like, uh, okay. if we open up the f file, the f2 pawn can still be easily protected. Fair enough. So, all right. So what we need to do is we need to create another weakness. And mm -hmm. there are a couple of options. D3 is a weak undefended pawn, but it's hard to be reached a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, we really cannot move any of these pawns and opening the position doesn't serve us good doesn't serve us any advantage i think playing a5 is a natural candidate move here very good because actually this is so natural that it should actually almost come instantly because this way yeah. you activate your rook and you're approaching the weakness b2 yeah hey offer shark my dear friend it's very good to see you thank you for joining the stream and hey shavaranji doing good i'm having some light warm-up <laughs> but apparently that light format was missed by the whole German national team, so. <laughs> yes, okay, so, but I mean, like, we no, always no, no, I'm, I'm think ambitious. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, no worries. 
No worries. A5, um, B takes A5, Rook takes F5 was played, now Rook E1. And he, okay, he still like decided to make a silent move like King G7, getting the King a bit closer, King G1. And now he went for one idea to approach B2. Of course, you can play um, the idea with, let's say, rook b5, rook a8, rook a6, rook b6. Uh, However, this looks a little bit more packed, and he decided to open up the b file in an easier way, which yeah. gives some more space. Sure, that's, I mean, it's very hard for uh, white to approach the c6 pawn, so b5 makes sense. Yes. B5 is very easy because our goal is B4. We open the B file and actually this is more or less game over. Yeah. B5, he played G3. Now Rook B8 was happening. Yeah, this is G2. actually quite easy to play. Yes, and B4. I mean, you cannot play A4 because I have B3 and I just collect the pawn yeah. sooner or later on um, A4. So um, he took on B4, took on B4. And played rook b1. Now rook a2 was happening. Okay, here already, like you have a free choice. I just show you the end of the story. Here, another very strong move, just not to allow any kind of out breaking from this cage, which white is already in. What could be a kind of, sorry to say, sadistic move here in this position? Uh, sadistic move. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Rook d two. Rook d two was of course possible. Like, but I mean, like he didn't even want to allow this bishop to see the sun ever shining again. Uh, you were Rook looking he, at h five. He played h five just to like make like make clear that this is like a cage. White will not break out. Of course, Rook d two is winning too. I mean, this is like a free choice of options. <laughs> King g1 was played, and now his next goal is to double on the second rank. Yeah. You see already that um, white plays king g1 and king g2 because he's out of anything. Now with c5, I'm also making sure that this pawn doesn't move anymore. King g1 was played, rook d2, and after rook e3, rook a8, actually the game was over. White saw enough. Wow, okay. That's... So this was actually a easy win when you have the control of a central square. This is usually always not good news for okay. the other side. All right. Okay, now we get into a bit more, let's say, complicated example, but it's yeah. also about techniques. And here you are white and you have to take the right decision. As you can see, you can exchange a lot of pieces and you can play a lot of different moves, but you should find the sequence here where you secure long-term advantage and therefore is only one sequence given okay. here. Um, in security guard, how do you always keep control of the center? Well, there are various ways to skin that cat for ver uh, forgive me the pun uh, you can you can control it with pawns you can also in some openings control it with pieces um, you also want to play against uh, you know a bad piece if there is one okay um, hopefully that I, yeah go, sorry Lizzie I, I just take something from the fridge I will be back no worries. that's fine all right guys so here is the thing since you know, we got the uh, got the lesson here from Lizzie, and uh, I think uh, the idea here is to try to get this knight. If we can get this knight to e6, it's basically game over. Very good. The question here is, how do we do that? And so, first move is to take on f6 that is a question knight e6 or bishop takes f6 or rook takes e8 okay so we can take on f6 g f6 is a is a bad move because uh okay 
the rook on e8 is hanging so after bishop so takes it takes, so after bishop bishop takes an f6 black cannot take black has to take on e2. on e2 mm -hmm. and takes and obviously that's a check and we need to take we take the rook and after that uh black can take with a with a bishop bishop pawn or rook all right taking with bishop doesn't destroy the doesn't destroy the, the structure mm -hmm. and well, it's the most natural move and the strongest clearly in this position yeah the problem here is that if we take on d5 black has an option of capturing the knight which that would be sad Hmm? That would be very sad for our yeah, fine. Hey, Bullet Mercenary Media friend, it's very good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Uh, if we can, one of the mods can just give a quick shout out to me, dear friend Bullet Mercenary. It would be great. Thank you. All right. So basically, that eliminates the whole uh, Bishop F6 sequence. Wait, I mean, like you have still like after rook takes you to um, rook takes you to bishop takes f6 instead of taking on d5, you can play knight e6 first. Yes, and that's the rook has to that's move. a rook has to move, and then we can take on d5. Mm -hmm. All right. The question is like after knight e6, and then you take on d5. What is the weakness black is fighting in this position? The only weakness which is like it's that life pawn. important. It's the uh, pawn. pawn on d5. Well, this is a weakness which black cannot attack, but I mean the the, the weakness in black's camp after like knight oh. e6 and c takes uh, c5. C7. So that means after knight e6, where should the rook actually go in order to get rid of this weakness? Okay, the rook needs to go to c8. Yes, and after c takes c5, what is uh, black immediately doing? immediately doing okay otherwise rook c1 is coming and he will lose the game basically okay um well rook on f8 is attacked right no you played rook c8 oh yeah c5 played... yes um oh okay so black needs to play immediately and c6 is bad because of rook c1 so black needs to play c5 Yes, and after c5, basically, like I got rid of this most crucial weakness, and actually, here, black has still good chances to make it wrong. Okay. So now let's see what other moves do we have here, and also like take into consideration, uh, consideration, Nic uh, Nicola, that mm -hmm. if you manage to capture on d5 without losing this pawn, we have space advantage. When we have space advantage in general, it's good to keep some pieces on the board. Which actually means, in uh, in this position, to exchange a pair of rooks is rather helping Black because the rooks are a little bit packed. Uh, hey, Rajvi, thank you. Hi, welcome to the stream. This is Nicola Stadis Chess with one of all international master <clears throat> Elizabeth Pets. Okay, so all right. All right, so the question here is, oh yes, Reverend, please uh, post it in chat. I don't really look at chat solutions. All right, so we are basically saying that the sequence of ex exchanging with F6, uh, exchanging with F6, rook, e2 rook e2 uh, bishop f6 take on d5 first knight e6 because otherwise yeah, i take on g5 yeah, knight e6 uh rook c8 c5 and c5 five is and not five. the it's not the sequence we want yeah i just 
I choose a range that's exactly what I'm looking looking at right now. And especially since Lizzie already gave us a hint that we should try to keep as many pieces as we want to due to space advantage. So we want this bishop on b2 is actually fairly strong. So yes, but we have to exchange it at some point on f6, otherwise we don't get e5. There is no way out, and the bishop on d8 is anyway the sorrow child in Black's position in a way. Yeah. All right. So we can play knight e6 first. Mm -hmm. Yes, rook f7 has to be played. And then rook f7 has to be played. Mm -hmm. And now if we now we can also consider taking on f6, f6. yes. F6. And, and now black can and that actually is a crucial tempo. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yes, so knight e6 was played, rook f7, Seven, uh, captured on f6, yeah, bishop f6, f6, and the difference is now you still have this weakness, and I cannot push c5 or c6, yeah. and that actually makes the change in the game. g6 yeah. was played, now king f3 in order to move one of the rooks away, yeah. not to be in a kind of unprotected scenario. A4, but white doesn't care. White now hits on c7, and white easily wins c7 because you will not be able to hold it on the long run as rook c2 is coming. Yeah, keeping the keeping another pair of rooks on the board actually makes yeah. a huge difference. Of course. So rook a8 happened. He voluntarily sacrificed. Now knight takes c7, and after rook a3 simply rook e3 and after rook e7 what you think here um white did just move the knight back to e6 yes knight e6 and actually black could resign there's rook c8 rook f8 mate there's rook c6 not to, with a double that, not to mention there is a nice mating threat on f8 yes yes rook c8 rook f8 so i mean that's just to see like how important it is actually to exchange the right pieces also yeah. in the ending. Okay. We stick to this topic with one more example. Okay. Thank you, Bert 2602. That's a very that's a very kind thought. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go, just have to kill the error. Yes, we are white in this position and we can see already we hit on d5 and on b7, yet I mean we cannot really, at least for now, win one of these pawns. And here white found a very nice idea to improve his position. Okay. Okay. All right, so. Okay, so there are no meaningful checks. There are no meaningful captures. Mm -hmm. there is so we have to find ideas. There is a very interesting pawn challenge. Yep, which is? Which is g4. Yep, but this is just a pawn challenge which gives you the square on f6, but this square may not be enough actually mm -hmm. to get something of it. Okay. All right. Well, I was mostly thinking in terms of uh, opening the f file. All right. Um, if we push a, well, here is a question. Uh, I mean, black really, okay. What we can also play is 
there is another pawn challenge, which is h5. Yes, but I mean, objectively, Nicola, do you think that the king side is your strong side? No. When all your other pieces are on the other side? No. Yeah, agreed. The question is also, are we able to, hypothetically speaking, hit on any of the two most crucial weaknesses here? Mm. Okay. Um. I mean, not... You mean how to reinforce attack on d5? We cannot play rook c5, right? Why we cannot play rook c5? What is wrong about rook c5? Actually, we can, right? Because yes. then we play queen d king d4, and oh yeah, duh. All right, so rook c5 is uh, should have been an automatic move. Yes, so rook c5 yeah. was played because okay, if yeah. now. Yeah. Um, if you play a6, then the b6 square is super weak and this is not affordable. So after rook c5, also like white didn't ca black didn't capture because king d4 is coming and then you have ideas like a6 and break in with a rook and this pawn will be the match point runner. So that's why here in this position after rook c5, king e7 was played, now rook b5 and here um, black took on c5 take on c5 and he played king d8 next move okay no checks no meaningful captures pawn challenges are not significant here actually hold on can we maybe we can play a6 very good what is the benefit of a6 um benefit of a6 is that it uh, for it creates a, a passed pawn on c, on uh, on the c if black takes uh, mm -hmm. c pawn will become a very far advanced passed pawn but there is something much more important because if for example like you play king d4 black will go king c7 and after a6 there is a crucial difference and what is the crucial difference the crucial difference is what okay uh, i mean yeah uh, we can play we can play rook a5 but that doesn't does it does work yeah it does work we the difference is that when we play rook a5 uh, the pawn on a6 cannot be defended by the king anymore and we basically get in this is also a reason, but I mean, the most crucial reason is that after a6, b takes a6, I can simply enter and this position actually with rook f8, rook f6 ideas is game over. Ah, okay. Hmm. Because then king d4 is coming, I capture on d5 and actually like this rook will just kill you. Maybe rook a5 is possible too, which is actually a similar idea. But that's why a6 should be played immediately because once the king is on c7, let's say king d4, king c7, yeah, yeah, then yeah. this doesn't really help so much anymore. I mean, still it might be a good move, but it's not that clear. All right, yeah, the getting the rook on f6 is, I didn't see that. Yeah. So that's, that's good to know. All right. Yes, so a6 was played in the game, king c8, and now basically white won the game in the next move. Okay, let me put it this way, this is an easy, easy win. Uh, we can even, ex can we, we can't exchange, there is no point in exchanging when b7 is there. Uh, well, we can even play king d4 um, okay mm. oh Jesus this is actually quite cool uh, rook b6 right yes rook b6 and the game is over this was um, the key move in this scenario yeah. okay. that was a cool <clears throat> move 
Yes, Flex do played some some moves, but this was not crucial. He played um, rook g, uh, bishop g8, now rook f6. I enter the um, position, which is important. Rook d8, king d4. And after b takes a6, rook d6, I mean, right easily won the game. Yeah. That's that's really is a very ugly position. Yep. Okay. So now we go also like a little bit into um yes, uh, let's stay a little bit in this topic actually. I like uh, it. Good. Um is this uh, where twenty six or two is saying that this is Rosenthalis versus Apple game? Is that this is yes a Rosenthalis. This was a Rosenthalis game. It's actually like Rosenthalis wrote a very nice book on the right exchange and as you may have realized, we are working on that now. <laughs> yeah, I see that. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Hey, Samit, my dear friend. Very good to see you. Thank you for being here. Okay. Now let's go a little bit more into the technical sequ sequences. One second. Uh, okay, now the question is, how can we estimate the move Queen H6. Hmm. Okay. Can we take on H6? That is, of course, the very first question. All right, so we can take King H6. Um, that doesn't, that actually doesn't look like a good sequence. Uh, but let me estimate this. Uh, okay. So the idea for the idea for white after queen h6, king h6, would be to get somehow the king on f4 and then push a8 and then take care of that way to a draw. But the king on um, h2 will never get to f4. No, that he has five moves, so that doesn't work. The question here is. The active defense is way too slow. Can black win the position? Yeah, that's a good question. Like after the exchange, if black will squeeze in the white king in the corner, which he will manage, is it winning or is it still a draw? Okay. Hmm. All right, so let me let me remind myself. I know that if the pawn is on g3, black pawn is in g3, that's a drawn position. Very good. That's good, of course, already to know. Okay. So the question here is, okay, uh, just a quick welcome to one and only Alessia Santeramo and a huge raid. Welcome, raiders. Uh, Alessia Santeramo is a dear friend of mine and a great streamer. She just actually assembled her Ferrari and she is on her way to become uh, a top Among Us streamer. She just got invited to play in the lobby with one and only Sips. So thank you, Alessia. Welcome to being here. It's very good to see you here. Raiders, this is a weekly Nicholas Studies Chess with one and all international master Elizabeth Betts. So, all right. Uh, okay, so the the issue, however, is is the following. How is black going to win this position? Okay, the first question is like how white is going to draw this position. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, so one possibility here is to, you know, if I'm, here is, here is another idea. Okay. 
So pawn on g3 is drawn. However, if uh, a7 pawn went, were to disappear, uh, and then black can simply take on g2, and if if the king, black king manages to capture pawn on g3, that's a one position for black. Yep. So when those, those are, so the idea here is for black to stalemate, stalemate white king, so the white has to take, it has to push a8, and then black can just take on g2, and that's basically okay. That when all said and done, uh, I, I wanted, I mean, without finding the specific winning sequence for black, I wouldn't take on h6, I would play queen h4. This is already a very good intuition, but let's assume like you take on h6, king takes h6, and we know that the black king will get towards f2 square. That's yes. easy to understand. And then after the king is on f2, the other king has to go to h1 at some point because we have hundreds of waiting moves with our bishop. Yeah. And then obviously we don't take on g2 and put yourself in stalemate. We take on g3 and we easily win the game. Yes. Because once we are on g3, then it's a matter of time to wait until king f1 or king h1 is happening. We take this pawn and then you have king f1 okay. always as a spare move. So that's why actually capturing on h6 is easily lost. So queen h4 is the best defense. Now the question is, can black take on h4 and win the game? Okay. All right, so let's look at the obvious sequence. Takes, takes, king h6. Mm -hmm. Obviously, oh, king g3 loses. Yeah, because of king h5, maybe this is not the smartest idea, but what we can do is white. Okay. We can play g3. Uh huh. Yes. And okay, so we play g3. And after g3, we can bring the king over here. And. There is no way bishop can stop both the h and the a pawn, so he's stuck on this diagonal. Yes, so this is why um, you uh, cannot take on you h4. You cannot take on h4, yeah. It's After g3, power. it's, yeah. So that means if I cannot take on h4, what would be here a smart move for black? Hey, Prabhu, my friend, it's very good to see you. Thank you. Okay. Well, we have just calculated the calculated the win with uh, with queen h6. Uh, uh, queen h7 is available to black, right? And then white has to take it. Yes, yes, queen h7. Okay, after queen h7, also like white's has plenty of moves. He has king g1 and king h1. But I mean, like, instead of queen h7, what would be more smart in order to keep the queen on the diagonal c1 h6? Because after king g1, at least there are queen e3 motifs. Um, mm, okay. Up. So, which waiting move makes more sense than queen h7, just with the same idea? To keep the queen on the diagonal, I mean. Okay. We can. We can threaten, well, the problem is that we need to defend pawn on g4, right? So we can play queen d2. 
Uh, the pawn on uh, g4 is not hanging because the queen is uh, the, the king is pinned actually. No, meaning after. Okay, so what I'm saying here is, like we can just play king g6, right? Yes, that's what I meant. King g6 makes a bit more sense because first of all, the king approaches towards the king side or king side's pawn okay. of white. Second of all, we keep the queen on the diagonal. Now, king g6. The question is now, what is white's best chance? King g1 or king h1? We already know that we cannot capture on h6. Okay. Well, all right. If we play king g1, there is queen e3 check. Uh, hey, Wild Westbrook, thank you for the follow. That's very greatly appreciated. Oh, there's a queen e3 and then queen e4. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any checks with the queen. Yes. So we kind of... The question is, can we play king h1? What is worse for white, king h1 or king g1 in terms of hoping for chances? Yeah, the problem with king h1 is queen h4. Yes, and, and then king, king h5, and, uh, and uh, we, we don't have g3. So we actually have to play king g1. Yes, and you are right. After king g1, actually, the best uh, way for black here to continue is to give the check on e3. Let's say king f1, and then simply. Um, Wait a second, I have to check my notation. Yeah. Then simply queen e4, threatening mate, queen h2, and let's say bishop d5, and okay, black is still winning here. However, in the game, actually here after king g1, black took on h4. Okay. On h4, and he was sure that he would win with g3, but you already told us this that. This is a draw. This is the draw, yeah. Because king h1, king g1, you will not be able to play king f2 and bishop takes g2 okay. mate. Who was playing this? This actually is a good question. I mean, I have it from a book and I have just the positions. I have uh, to look okay. on. No, no, that's fine. I mean, maybe I find it in the reference. I can check, um, but not sure it is given. I will check now, but... Um, could be that uh, the analysis is mixing up the reference. Actually, hold on a second. Let me think for, yeah. No, it's Rosenthalus against Weindel, played in 1999, in 1990. Hmm. So it was once again a Rosenthalus game. Okay. No, I was okay. just uh, thinking with all these extra pawns, if we can put, put king on a the king on f2 and bishop on f3 and kind of force the capture while the king is on h1 but uh, we can't yeah okay we will go for yeah one more easy one before we go into other categories okay whenever any of the my trainers coaches say easy one this is when i get really truly nervous <laughs> but yeah actually the next position in my opinion is fairly easy at least okay. could be for you now it's why to move okay all right so given actually thank you by the way i think i know what the sequence is we're going to play bishop d7 we're going to exchange light square bishops and then we're going to park the knight on f5 and that's curtains right. yes i mean like this already like now is a kind of pattern which you have seen hundreds of times so it's very easy to understand that knight on f5 without the light colored bishop it's game over yet there was some interesting sequence in the game about one moment I still want to ask you later on. I just have to open this position. So bishop d7 was played. Now um, after bishop d7, he took, he took, and rook fd8. Now the rooks had to be exchanged because, okay, I mean, rook e7 is king f8, so there is no choice. 
and knight g3 and here in the uh, position uh, king f8 was played knight f5 and king e8 and now actually like we have to understand how to continue the game is far from over how to improve this position here nicola okay um Okay. Well, the question number one here is, do we want to keep the rooks on the board or not, right? That's a very good question, actually. And this is also a crucial question. What is a better chance for black to make a draw with or without rooks? All right, so let's assume the rook, if rooks are off, off the board, the knight on f and the pawns are on both sides it's i think as white we need to keep the rooks very good yeah yes because especially like if you look at the kind of weaknesses it would be much better to have the uh, rooks on the board because the moment we exchange the rooks and run to g5 with our king let's say then actually the king will be ready on g8 and then well that's very hard to attack those weaknesses yeah that's fair enough hey idiot of chess thank you for your kind words that's very greatly appreciated okay so well black rook doesn't really have anywhere to go but uh, you know some Okay, so what is the black's plan? Black's plan is to pro put the king on e6. Yes. And then put the rook on g8. And then or e8. Or yes. e8. And uh, then play on this. Uh, so the immediate move that makes sense is to play g4 to to maybe solidify that posi position of the knight and prevent some h5 nonsense down the road so okay that's... the question is like once you play h5 this uh, pawn is even more weak because yeah. of like knight g3 and knight g7 patterns the question is like what we have to ask ourselves is how to activate the rook. And if you cannot really activate the rook on the D file because it is taken on which, let's say, not quite open file, but it could be an open sure. file after maneuvers, the rook can get active. Okay, we can do the good old rook swing and play h4, rook h3, and rook g3, and then we're going to attack that pawn on h7, and that's going to be uh, curtains yes. very soon. Yeah, okay. That's why h4 is played. Now at least we have the swing, swinging rook, and if you give me g file, I go on the d file. If you give me the d file, I go on the g file. So that is the system. King d7 now was played. He's aiming for king e6. Rook h3. Now rook g8 was happening. He gave the check on d3. King e6. And now the move g3. Here in this position, bishop b6 was played. What would you play now? And you should always, of course, consider what is Black's intention in order to, well, improve his position too. Okay. So... Okay, so we have a couple of options here. Mm -hmm. We can be sneaky and play rook d5. What is the idea of rook d5? 
to push the C pawn, C pawn to C5. That's just a good idea, but what actually, like the funny part is you say it's the right move, but not necessarily the best, um, uh, the best reasoning why rook d5 actually here is by far the strongest move in the position. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we have a mate on d6 if rook is challenged, but I know that's not the answer. Um, Let's say we play king e2. What would black play in this position after king e2? I, uh, hey, spy, uh, uh, spices1215, thank you for the follow. And DG Sasha Gans, thank you for the follow. Very greatly appreciated, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, we are rapidly approaching 3,000 followers and once we reach that milestone there will be a special open field media event so i'm very much looking forward to reaching that milestone um actually i have to say that i'm i don't really um i'm not seeing the whites the blacks plan here which is obviously part of the problem uh there is nothing to be gained by playing h5 no um that's actually a weakness because... that would make uh, white job easier um but how could white uh, could black try to control back the square on d8 okay yeah you are saying that you can play uh, c6 but that, not quite now but that runs into a mate on d6 Mm -hmm. So what has to be done by Plak in order to have either c6 or get the control of d8 in a different way? Oh my god, I see what you're saying. Yep, 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 yep. I understand now. Okay. Uh, basically, the, the it's just that that maneuver is so time consuming. Basically, what Black wants to play is a5, b6, c5, d6, and rook d5 prevents bishop c5. Yes, so bishop c5, bishop e7. If he manages this, he has good chances again. That's why actually rook d5 by far is the best move here. Not right. because of uh, what you said with c4, c5, but I mean, also, this is of course an idea which is uh, given in this position, but mainly to prevent bishop c5 move. Yeah. So now in this game, after rook d5, a6 was played, what do you think, what is the idea of a6 for black in the next few moves? Okay, since we cannot play... Okay, so since black cannot play c6 here... Mm -hmm. What does he want with a6? All right, so he wants to play bishop a7. And bishop b8, and then and push then, c6. And then push, push on. And then he can actually push c6 and get the... And then it's the same plan. Jesus, that's so slow. Yeah. Yes, and now, of course, since we know that Plax still hopes to um, get like his bishop on the diagonal connected with d8, for example, on c7. What can we do against the plan of bishop a7, bishop b8, and c6? How we can prevent it in time? Okay. Yeah, Zavgus, uh, Zavgus Philly, it's, it's a long time. Okay, so how can we prevent it? Hmm. Okay, we can. So what we can do is we can push. Jesus, okay, so we can play c4. Mm -hmm. And after bishop a7. We can push c5. And after bishop b8. We can push c6. Yes, very good. That's what happened in the game. So you understand the depths of these kind of endings, you know? 
No, no, no. This is uh, this is very good because we're to be quite frank with everybody here. Uh, that's this line is the whole uh, plan A five B six C five D six is. Let me put it this way, it's now clear and it makes perfect sense, but there is no way in the universe I would have known before this uh, before this stream. So thank you, Lizzie. No, I mean, this is clear, but on the other hand, it always helps if you like sure. try to also search for the best defending chances, because obviously sure. it's Black who, who has troubles and the only way yeah. to solve these troubles is to get his bishop off the diagonal, either on that one or on that diagonal yeah. in order have good defending chances and white simply doesn't allow it yeah so six was played b takes c6 now rook a5 bishop a7 he captured on a6 bishop b6 and now of course there are different ways here of winning he decided to play rook a4 bringing his rook to c4 where he has like a weakness here then at some point play a4 i will just show you some more moves Rook b8 was played b3, bishop c5, and rook c4. I mean, eventually, like, Black managed, on the other hand, like, he has a lot of additional weaknesses for that. So, uh, bishop... Hmm? Yeah. No, 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 it's fine. Uh... King, d2, king d7, and now the king actually approaches the other wing. So, I mean, now suddenly Black has too many worries because white is exploiting those weaknesses so rook a4 not to allow rook a6 rook b8 and um here he maneuvered his knight getting the king to f5 of course after bishop c5 we will never exchange that knight it's our trump card so he went to d1 king e6 and rook c4 and okay after the check on g eight king h5 white slowly managed to approach one weakness captured it later on and won the game for us not so crucial this um period anymore of this um game but it was very important to um understand all the defending chances from black no no, no absolutely this uh, the whole I mean, it's it's the same question you have asked. Uh, you have asked where would Black want to put the a piece if he could, and the solution mm -hmm. is basically put the bishop from a5 to d6, and after well, after that's understood, everything else is completely natural, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, to be uh, to answer the question of um, the to idiot of chess, this the, the then this knight was completely dominant in this position because it has an outpost on f5 from which it couldn't be displaced and basically that's the reason why it won the game okay now we do like a kind of breathing in which means like some relaxation because this is knowledge and i'm sure you know it but it's a kind of quick test before we change the chapter of endings yeah. at all my question is is king c3 winning the game or drawing the game oh this is actually a position that i i know it you know it okay then it's good yeah. then you can yeah. it's let me let me actually remind myself because I don't I, I see the position but I don't remember the moves so let's stick with it I need a refresher. Uh, okay. Um, I don't like Queen C three to be quite frank with you. King C three. King King, oh King C three. Yes, to understand whether this pawn ending which is resulting after b1 promotion is winning for black or not for black for white no i mean like uh yeah for white sorry for white of yeah. course yeah no we're gonna have a ratey motive again right very good this is ratey yes we just yeah. have all right so this uh, is the sequence why king c3 doesn't work uh, king c3 b1 takes takes uh, king, uh, king b4, 
king b2, king a4, yes. king c3, and we are in the square, oh. and it's a draw. Yes, that was an easy one. I will give you one more as a kind of relaxation. It's a bit more complicated, but still knowing the pattern. Of yes, course. I it. exactly. That's that's it. Of course. And why to move? Okay. Yeah, I don't know, exactly. Easy one. <laughs> sure. No, I mean, this is a bit harder, but... Uh, no, we're uh, talking about the last one. <laughs> Fine. All no, right. No, 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 that's fine. Um, all right. So we have this pawn on C pawn, that we, C file that we cannot stop. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there is no way we are getting into the square of C file, C pawn. So, and B7, C4 is hopeless, D6, C4 is hopeless, F pump cannot move, King H6 is hopeless. Uh, mm -hmm. So the only move that seems to make sense is h5, c4, h6, you should always try to consider all candidates. Because after h5 already, black has two moves. Not only c4. Fair enough. So h5. King f7. Okay, and we need h6, king h8, we need three moves to stalemate ourselves and to play f6. It's not very likely because we have also d6 and b7 and d7 have a lot of pawns. Yeah. No, I know, but I can play d6 and d7 and get rid of those two pawns, but they don't have enough, enough moves. Yeah, that doesn't work. Fair enough. All right, so H5, King F7, right? That, mm -hmm. that means that H5 is a problem. Yes, h5 is a problem because of king f7. That means h5 he can it's rule out. Move. Mm -hmm. All right, so king h8 doesn't make a sense. And we don't have any other meaningful pawn moves. That basically means the only move we can play is king g8. Yes, so after king g8, what is the only answer by black? Okay, if, uh, if black plays c4, mm -hmm. then I'm going to play h5 and I'm actually okay. 
Yes, because even after King G5, you have two passed pawns, which one, are... One of them is going to promote. Yep. And the knight doesn't have any checks. Okay. And basically, these three cancel each other themselves out. So after King um, G8, what is the only reasonable answer by Black? Is King F5. King takes F5, yes. Ah, but then I have King F7. Well, after King F7, well, then I can play C4. Mm. Yeah, and I don't, I, I can't take advantage of this pawn. All right, so King G8, King F5. Now what? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Fanti 1, I think you're right. So we're going to play King G7. King G7, okay. What is the difference between King G7 and H5? Why not H5 to start with? Uh, because uh, okay, um, because you don't uh, because after King G seven you don't have King G five. Hmm. Hold on. Is this gonna turn into another ready position for crying out loud? Of course, this is rating. <laughs> oh, God. All right. Yeah. The other the warm up rating, this is a more complicated rating, but of course, it's rating. Okay. Because, right. because after this King G7, King G4, I have King G6. Yes. I mean, you're right. I don't have, I don't have it with H5. Yes, because after h5, king g5, king g7, actually I can take on h5 and after okay. king you are not in the square to stop the pawn on c5. And that's that's it, basically. Yes, so basically here king, king g8, now you play king g7, and after king g4 you play king g6. And here you are in time and save the game. Okay. All right, interesting rating motive. Nice. Yep. Now let's move right. on. Um, while you're pulling up the position, just a quick shout out. We just got a whole bunch of new viewers. Hi, hi guys. Welcome to Nicholas Studies Chess with the International Master Elizabeth Petz. I'm Nicholas Stoshin. I am uh, about close to a 2000 uh, player. Uh, in, uh, International Master Elizabeth Betts, better known as Lizzie, is famous as Miss Messi, and she is, she is try, she is trying to improve my chess. This is a weekly feature on our on this channel, and welcome. It's very good to see you guys. And this is happening every Wednesday at uh, at uh, seven a.m. Eastern time. And so welcome thank you and uh, fratute thank you for the follow thank you guys we are approaching 3000 followers and the 3000 followers we're gonna have a special event and of course lizzie always says oh this is a warm-up oh this is easy and so on and so forth and uh, you know despite the, the warm-up first warm-up of this of this stream was something that was missed by the whole german national team and grandmaster Vasily topala former world champion so yeah, that's easy. So anyway, <laughs> sure. Okay, so I'm a, a hey, uh, Philexia, thank you for the follow. Very greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, right. you are right. We will like have two positions of this topic and then we will go on. We will make a mix now of different position types so that everybody is entertained and you don't know what topic we are in for a change. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you, Lizzie. So what what is uh, this is white to move and I'm evaluating the position material is equal. Um, white has a huge advantage in uh, development and space. Mm -hmm. um, 
the question here is okay what how do we make advantage of it yes what to do with white okay in this position all right um okay so the plan for black is to uh, sorry about that guys um, all right so the this is one of those counter your opponent's plans type of position very good so you know that we are in the proper lux section all right so So we black plan is to develop quickly. So knight c6 if I'm black. If the black is to move and I'm black, I'm playing that immediately. Mm -hmm. Or even knight e seven, but one of or, those. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So all right. So let me see here. Uh, I want to stop that. So I can play queen b5 or queen a4, mm -hmm. uh, which kind of stops that. And, you know, I'm not going to go pawn grabbing on a7. Um, okay. So basically, if I am black, if I manage to put the knight on c6 and somewhere. So the sequence is that. Um, if uh, black, and then I can play against this pawn. So here is, here is, I'm just thinking loud. Obviously I don't have any checks. I don't have any meaningful captures. What I want to do here is to play queen a4 to prevent knight from coming out. Mm -hmm. And then... Queen Say it again, I'm sorry. Or queen b5. You have two options, and unfortunately, Nicola, for you, one is a good one, the other one is not such a good one. Yeah, of course. That's uh, that's so. That's the so, dilemma about so this. So unusual. All right. So here is here is what I'm thinking. Just uh, mm -hmm. um, let's say we play either of the move, and Black plays queen. Uh, Bishop F8, asking the question of this rook. Hey, Kali Basics, Dion, thank you for the follow. Very greatly appreciated. Thank you. So, if I do that, I... All right. All right, so... Okay. I was kind of hoping for some sort of a sequence of queen a4 and then rook a6, but that doesn't work. No. So, um, if I play, um, what, I'm, what am I doing after, what's my answer to bishop f8? That is the key question about choosing both moves, queen b5 and queen a4. Okay. There is a difference in terms of bishop f8 and if you understand that difference you easily solve the issue mm, fair enough so if i play queen a4 mm -hmm. bishop f8 uh, okay All right, then where I'm going with the rook? Um, I cannot go to e6. No. Another question, Nicola, before mm -hmm. you come to bishop f8, what you should always like try to visualize. If you look at black's position compared to white's position, white black's position is still unstable. Yeah. Oh, I, I see. I see what you want. I see. I see. No. Okay. 
hold on. Um, if all right, I'm trying to find the sequence, and I'm I'm just looking. So, so let's assume I play queen b five, bishop f eight. Mm -hmm. Um. Rook is threatened. Yes. Uh, I was hoping to play rook f6 and then right. queen b7 or something along those lines. Okay, but why cannot, uh, before we look for moves which cause a threat, what are the checks after queen takes f6? There is a queen b5 and then the rook on a8 fails. Gotcha. All right, makes sense. So queen b5, bishop yeah. f8. Uh, rook f6, and okay. that's pretty bad for black. Gotcha. The okay. only question is now after queen b5, a6, how would you play here? Because that is the only option which is left. All right, queen b5, a6, after, okay. All right. What's the, I mean, it's not in our benefit to exchange queens in this position. Well, depends, like, uh, of course, if Plaque can get out with his knight on b8 and rook on a8. This is the main concern. If Plaque is stuck with those two pieces, we don't care about the queen exchange, actually. Yeah, so that's the sequence. Yeah, makes sense, because knight, all right, so that's, this is the sequence. Queen b5, yes. a6, queen d5. That was takes, like... Takes mm -hmm. cd5, and this knight is permanently yeah. in a trapped, and that wins the game. Yes, that was the sequence. Yeah. So he took here. Now they exchanged these guys, but this, of course, didn't help black. King f7, and simply rook d8. Now those guys are pinned. King e7, rook c8, waiting for the king to go to d7 to select the bishop. If you play h5, because you don't have so much moves since you're sort of in a zugzwang, then bishop a3 check also is an easy win. I either yeah. push with form yeah. or have g8 right. also to come. All right. uh, Lizzie, while you are pulling up the next position, you yeah. just need to go to the restroom real quick yeah. all right i'll be back guys mm -hmm. okay. i'm in the wrong folder actually uh. Sorry about that. And yes, I washed my washed my hands. <laughs> hey, Sherlock, yeah. my dear friend. It's very good to see you. Uh, now you can see me. There you go. Hey, Chess on Earth, it's very good to uh, very good to see you. Please uh, let's give a quick shout out to my dear friend, Chess on Earth, and also uh, a quick shout out to my dear friend Shadok who is streaming among us and i'm very looking forward to our next uh, oh he's playing code names very good 
Uh, anyway. Uh, so, next position is a very quick one. You should see this once in your life and you will never forget. Okay. That's just a collection of a new pattern, nothing more. Maybe you have seen it and then it actually, you can leave it. But what is here the right move for black? Some will know it for by black? theory. Yeah, for black. Some know it by theory. So please, those who know it, just be silent because this is a kind of pattern uh, collection which um, Nicola should memorize and see one time. Okay. So don't suggest these here any moves. It's just about one small thing and we will proceed. All right, very good. So we have a little problem with knight c6. Right. Yes, we have a little problem with knight c6, but here is a good way of Solving it. Okay. Um, actually, I'm not familiar with this position, so I'm glad you're showing this. Uh, all right, so we can castle, but then we we are gonna we have a we still have a problem with knight c6. Uh, we can take on c3. Yes, we can take on c3. Yes. But um, here it's not concrete. It's really like uh, Nicola just one move of on how to solve the issue on B seven in the most beneficial way. Yeah. Okay. So, what are the candidate moves here? Um, the no checks. We have actually two captures that are interesting. Uh, option one is to take on c3, which doesn't look that appealing. Another option, which is probably what Lizzie actually have in mind, is to, let's see, can we take on e5 and then play knight d7? Well, we are pinned. Unfortunately, this is illegal. <laughs> which would be nice if we could. Right. So we can't do that. This is a kind of Nimsu Indian kind of position with this queen a4 check and knight c6 pattern. Yeah. Could also come from the Ragosian, I think. I mean, different uh, ways. So what other? So we have capture here, we have a capture here, and we have a capture here. We don't have a capture on five still. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. My, I'm, I'm brain dead. My bad, guys. Sorry. That's stupid on me. All right, so we have a capture here and we have a capture here. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This is not about tactics, actually. This is just about seeing this. This is like really just a, sure. a collection of pattern. You will not forget about it and you will consider sure. it if you come. Well, we don't want to double the C pawns on the open file, right? So what we can do Hmm. All right, so let's let's let me think for a second. If I capture on d4, capture on c6, capture on c4, open check b5. Hmm. <laughs> Actually, after knight e5 check, you just lose. Yeah. If you capture on c6, you capture on c4, knight e5 check. And the funny part is actually, Nicola, you don't even have to really calculate something here. You just have to solve the problem. About no, I know. It's, need, it's needlessly... Oh. No need to go into needless mess. Mm. All right, so I can play bishop this bishop d7 but then you lose a piece after knight takes uh, lose a piece all right so basically um so our big problem is this bishop so we can capture here 
But then actually, if you capture on C3, I mean, like you just improve uh, the position from white. Yeah, and then you have bishop e3, yeah. and it's a problem. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, Nicola, you're a pawn up, which means you can give back that pawn, which you anyway have to, otherwise you just get into trouble. The question is like, how to give back the pawn on C6? In what way? What is the most beneficial outcome for you to give back the pawn? Yeah. Okay, so... All right, so my problem is bishop on b4. It's actually beneficial for me to keep it. So, I mean, I can get cute and play a5, but let me, let's do this. I think after this sequence, I'm better, actually. Let's do this. Okay. You want to play a5? Mm, no, I'll play bishop d6. Bishop d6 is the second strongest move in this position. Okay. Which is, of course, solving the problem. I mean, like, uh, after bishop d6, I take on c6, you play bishop d7, queen f3, and white is slowly better. What is another way of solving the issue on c6 and the hanging bishop on b4? Well, a5. Well, after a5, actually, you weaken a bit the squares. Actually, like I can take on c6 and you play like bishop d7, queen f3, and then you didn't improve anything after that. Because, okay, you have to do something to either protect the bishop on b4 or to move that bishop away. And there's only two options. There's bishop d6, which is actually a decent move here. And I will show you now the pattern. It's rook b8. Okay. And rook b8 is something really typical in this kind of Ragosian structures because right. the idea okay. yeah, I, makes sense. I indirectly protect the knight on c6, but I also activate my rook. And even if you play, let's say, something like bishop uh, um, after rook b8, you play something like bishop b5, I simply don't care because I can castle. And you have to at some point take on c6. And I just activate my rook, and after knight takes c6 here, bishop d7 works. And that's why rook b8 okay. is the most elegant way to solve this trouble and the problem, and also like improve your position because at some point white has to take on c6 back the pawn, but you already activated the rook. And that makes perfect sense. Okay. But this is a pattern actually, like uh, which you see one time in your life and yeah, you yeah, never. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I, I agree. That's. Nice, actually. Okay. Okay. But I mean, to be honest, like I was confronted with that pattern not long ago and I didn't see it too because I don't play. No, this. that's fine. No, the, the whole so, purpose of this is to improve my library of patterns among, among quite a few other things. And that's, uh, that's great. So I can tell you, I also didn't find it. I mean, I found it eventually, but after like uh, a lot of hints. <laughs> Okay, we get back to old classical games. This is Lilienthal against Bot Winnick. Uh, I'm black. You are black, yes, and white played f4. And the question is A, what do you think about f4 as a move? Is it a good one? Is it not a good one? And B, what should black do against f4 here? And uh, Botwinnik is black. Botwinnik is black and Lilienthal is white. Okay. All right, so material is equal. Yep. There are no checks. Mm -hmm. We can capture an e5. Well, yes, but I'm. I'm, I'm just summarizing. I don't yeah. kill me. I'm, don't <laughs> worry. 
<laughs> I'm not capturing only five. Yeah, I mean, like, if you capture only five, this is a typical moment, like when I would no, 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 then, then, my no, cup of tea. <laughs> no, then you would, uh, then you go to the balcony and jump off from it. I, I know, I understand that completely. So I'm not going to do that, don't worry. Yeah. Okay. Fante is saying playing knight e4, but that looks like it's giving away a pawn, right? It does. But okay, before like you look at the move for black, what do you think? Is f4 good or bad for white? I don't like it. Why? Because it creates a weakness on e4 and weakness on g4. Okay, especially the weakness on e4 is crucial because again, okay, the g4 is not a central square plus, I mean, yeah. I can black on point h3 yeah. and that will offer. So okay. now, since we know that f4 is not great from the positional point of view because the weakness on e4 is arising, what is the automatic sort you may have here in this position? if we can get an ideal scenario, what would Plak try to do in order to exploit the central square? Because we already know that if we get into the possession of such a square and can't be kicked out, it's a horror scenario for the opponent. All right. So what should we try to reach? I mean, knowing that E4 is a square we should fight for. Okay. All right, so let me, so, oh, Jesus, this is Botvinnik, and I'm just going to say something not nice about Botvinnik. Um, I always felt uh, that playing Botvinnik is uh, like playing against engine. Really? Like he was uh, um, such an uh, engine player or? No, no, he wasn't an engine player. He He's very precise, very methodical. And um, I don't want to say something about one of the greatest chess players in history. It just felt a little bit soulless sometimes. Mm. But yes, he had, but actually like he had a very great influence as far as I remember on Carpo. Could it be? No, no, no. He was one of the greatest players and he was a long, world champion for a long time. He was also, um, he had, was a doctor of technical sciences. He was a great engineer. He's the first, uh, one of the first very strong players that did uh, actually create computers in chess. So, and uh, <laughs> um I think there is a great story by, Ka was it Kasparov or I don't know whom, in which he wanted him to participate in creating Botvinnik Kasparov school and Botvinnik was very frail. It was in the 90s, but his mind was as sharp as ever. And that's all can one say. Anyway, sorry guys for the, that, uh, that aside about Botvinnik. Anyway, anyway. All right, so... We cannot jump on e4 because that gives us gives away uh, it gives away the pawn a pawn, and uh -huh. I don't think we're get, getting enough compensation. And unless we want to trade the light, w getting rid of white's light square bishop is worth it, which probably isn't. Right. Um, so one position like. Future plan could be we get rid of the light squared bishop on d3 and on the one on c3, and then the e4 square is ours. Yeah. That is the kind of automatic sword which should arise if your opponent pushes such an anti position move like f4. Yeah. So, in the ideal universe, we want to get the pawn to f5 before we jump. Uh, also, um, we kind of, all right, so Botvinnik being Botvinnik, he probably uh, played g6 here, right? Nope, 
He yeah. didn't. Okay. Actually, have you ever heard of the rule if your opponent attacks you on the wing or in the center? What is an automatic reaction as a rule? You counter it on the other side of the board. Yes. I mean, this rule actually like is sure. always helpful right. just to keep in mind. It doesn't always work. But for no, this no. reason, after f4, what is the first move to check automatically? I, just know, I understand. C5. Yes, C5. And now the question is like the move C5. Is it a good or a bad one? Or what are the benefits of that move C5? Okay, so, uh, yeah, fair enough. Uh, we we are going to end up with an isolated pawn on d5. If I mean, white no, takes, question... but then we have also undermined the whites. That, no, that sequence actually works in our favor. Yeah, so I mean, like, first we have to check d takes c5 in order to get the isolated pawn, but why d takes c5 is a positional error? What are you playing here after d takes c5? It, uh, we are, we're just, actually, we're just going to take on e5. Yes, we take on e5, play knight e7, and okay, I mean, white uh, is... We have, we are, we have white, forget about the isolated pawn, so, yeah, okay. I mean, like, you have to play b4, but we take on e5, we play rook c8, we push b6, and I think you don't survive on a long okay. stage. So, basically, counterattack in center is the... All right, c5. Not, so, we are threatening c4. Yes, and then the bishop either has to leave the diagonal b one h seven, which would allow us a move like g six, or the yeah. bishop goes voluntary to f five, which is also great because we get rid of one um, problem towards um, the control of the square e four. Besides, the bishop on e six is objectively our bad bishop since it is um, yeah hitting on his own pawn. Yeah, and there are no. There are no f5 threats here, so yeah, okay. So king b, I mean, in the game, actually, king b1 was played. Just prophylactical to be out. Now, of course, c4 was pushed. And okay, since like um, Lilienthal didn't want to allow a move like g6 by bishop f1 or bishop e2, he decided to go to f5 instead. Now the question is how to proceed. And the first question is like, which at least for me would be an automatic question, shall we take on f5 or shall we allow the capture on e6? Which means is a queen better for white on f5 or where it is on c2? And this is a crucial question actually in terms to understand if the capture on f5 is beneficial for us or not giving the square for the white queen on f5 or if it is better to allow the capture on e6 and do something else mm -hmm. okay that's actually not an easy question no but okay i mean like what we have to understand is apart from the fact that those bishops will anyway be traded in neither way the other concern is to exploit the square on e4 with a knight, so knight e4. And for this, we obviously need sooner or later the move bishop b4. Yes. And then the question is like, when the bishop anyway arises on b4, what is better for white? To have the queen on c2 or the queen somewhere else? No, it's better. So basically the strategy here is to, we want to take and then play bishop b4. Yes, because actually the, the, the funny part is that even so the queen on the first glance looks more active here, the queen is rubbish on f5 because the queen needs to be back to defend c3 as some moves like bishop takes c3, knight e4 and queen a3 arising and the white's king would be in big danger. Yeah. So that's why here in this position white actually voluntary went back on um, c2 that means actually with a capture on f5 we won a tempo now the question is nicola knight e4 yes or no or any other move hmm. okay
well, okay. Oh, hey, Chess on Earth, thank you for gifting us up to uh, Noam Lifshitz. That's very great. I appreciate it. Thank you, my friend. Okay. So, so what is the sequence? All right, so let's say 94 is played. Mm -hmm. uh, for all intents and purposes, white can take, all right, and sacrifice the exchange. Yes, he could, of course, yeah. And that actually looks good for white because it's going to capture this pawn. This pawn is going to be weak. This knight is a monster. Well, black would still be better, but objectively speaking, what Winnick understood, I mean, this would just give much better practical chances for white. And yeah. since I don't need this kind of trouble, no. he decided not to play knight e4. So what could be a good move here in order to improve the position? And uh, thank you, Jess on Earth, for giving a gift tier one sub to Calibre 61 and also to Spectre 1492. Thank you so much for gifting all these subs today. That's very greatly appreciated. And a quick shout out to Chess on Earth, who is a fellow streamer and a great friend of this channel. Please give him a follow. Oh, oh, it would be good if I could type. There you go. That's better. Thank you. Thank you again. Thank you for getting us up to the pillow, pillow, pillow pond. Thank you, Chess on Earth. All right, so he doesn't need knight e4. So the question here is, what is the better move than knight e4? Uh -huh. And um, well, we can take on c3. Well, does it run away to take on c3 for now? No, I don't think this is the moment to do it. That bishop is not weak, exactly. And also, like, I mean, we can always take on c3 the moment this knight is threatening to go away. Let's okay. say the knight would go to, let's say, e2, then aim for g3 and try there to control the square on e4. But currently, the knight, if the knight moves, we get the exchange for nothing. So that is not a concern. We don't have to rush in. No. And we don't really want we don't really want to exchange knight on f6 for knight on e5 because we don't have then a knight to put there. Though that knight e5 is fairly annoying. But actually, this knight on e5 it looks quite strong. But what does this knight do? It doesn't really like annoy us at all because it has. We can no... play around it. Yeah. Okay. Can play around it. Yes, that's what I wanted to say. Okay, so what we can so the hey, thank you for uh, thank you, Chess on Earth again for gifting a T1 sub to Fratut. Very greatly appreciated. Thank you, my friend. All right, so we have this rook on h8 that's not doing anything, right? Mm -hmm. So we can activate that rook. Uh, we can play well. That's a kind of automatic move to put put it on e8. Uh, Another option is because, uh, you know, we have uh, some options that we can play rook d6 mm -hmm. uh, to swing the rook over and maybe attack white king. And, hmm. and what move makes more sense, rook e8 or rook d6? Uh, uh, rook e8 is not doing anything on e8, so rook d6. Yes, rook d6 is a very good move because, okay, this rook now becomes a swinger on both sides. And also, like, it will give the, NASA, the other square for this other rook, and this other rook then would also get on the sixth rank. For example, we can aim to stage both rooks on a6 and b6 as a long-term plan. Okay. So after rook d6, rook e2 was played, and now is the moment when maybe knight, the knight wants to jump around. So Botswinik took on c3, mm -hmm. and here, not to lose the tempo, b takes c3 was played. Knight e4, quite natural, and king a1. 
Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. so just to answer the question, Spectre 1382-94, the idea is that white will sacrifice uh, sacrifice exchange, take on e4, then capture pawn on e4, and actually have some good chances. And chess on earth, thank you for all these subs. Thank you for gifting five tier one subs and another set of tier one subs. Thank you so much, my friend. That's very, very, very greatly appreciated. Thank you. Okay, so... Uh, all right. Yeah, with this uh, is not a good position for white. Yes, so the question is now how black will continue. Okay, we can play rook a6. We obviously don't have any captures that are meaningful. We don't have any checks whatsoever. We can play, we can basically continue to swing rooks over. So we mm -hmm. can play rook a6 and then play yep. rook d8, rook d6, rook b6, Very good. queen a3. Yep. And, so, you know, I think you, st and not to mention that when you get the queen on a3, you're attacking pawn on c3. Yes, so very good. Rook a6 was played. This is better than rook b6 because, yeah. okay, I mean, what Winnick thought in the longer run, he always aims to get all the possible squares for the missing pieces. Besides, rook a6 is creating the threat of rook a3, yeah. and c3 can't be protected, though queen c1 was played. Now, next move. Okay. Hey, Chess on Earth, thank you for gifting all these subs, my friend. Another another, another batch of five. Thank you, my friend. That's very, very, very greatly appreciated. Thank you. Mm. All right, so we can continue the plan, right? We can yes. play Rook D8. Very good. Yes, Rook D8. I mean, like, looking at this game, for example, it looks to me like that chess is such a logical game because, okay, everything here makes perfectly sense. Now, rook c2 was played to prophylactically um, protect the pawn on c3. And now, of course, rook d6 happened. And here, knight g4 was played. And of course, this is another key moment when, um, um, when actually black has to be a bit careful. So what do you think, Nicola? What is knight g4 about? Uh, the knight on g4 is about knight f2, right? Yes, very good. Okay, so... Huh, all right, so there is an e a relatively easy counter to that. But can we play rook g6 first? Very good. I mean, there's rook g6 or there's queen h4 in order to stop knight f2. And of course, it makes much uh, more sense to play um, rook g6 because the queen, we still kind of hope to be on the other wing with queen a3 motifs. That's why the swinger here with rook g6 is a perfect move. After rook g6, h3 was played. And now the question is... Um, how to continue here with um, black. And this was a brilliant sequence here of what, what Winnick played in his next two moves. Okay. Uh, just a quick shout out to Nandi Chess. Uh, she's a friend and a fellow streamer. Please give Nandi uh, a, a check out and a follow. She is recently started streaming and uh, she has a great channel. So please give her a give her a look see and a follow. Oh, thank you, Chess on Earth. Thank you for all your support. That means a lot. Chess on Earth is the biggest supporter of this channel. And thank you so much, Chess on Earth. It's always good to see you here. Thank you. So, all right. So brilliant sequence. Yes, I mean for me this was brilliant because yeah, we will see anyway. I can't even give a reason why it was brilliant, but it's not so difficult, but it's still, I think it's uh, this kind of small subtleties I like very much. Okay. Again, no meaning, no, 
I mean, there's a check on A2 that doesn't count, no meaningful captures. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I mean, we can try to build an Aliakin's gun on a file. On the H file, you mean? On the A file. Ah, the, ah, the A file, yes, yes, I forgot I am in the other wing, yes. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so we can play rook a3, for example. Okay, rook a3, but even if, let's say, we play rook a3 and we will create this gun on the ASA file, let me just think what I would do if I can now actually, no, I cannot play knight f2. I'm not saying that's the, that's, I'm just thinking loud. We can play h5 to kind of get rid of that knight. Yes, that's what he did, actually. He played h5, get the knight back to e5, where it should be, and then he played rook b6, and still, like, white is far yeah. away to change that knight. Okay. This was, okay, maybe rook a3 actually works pretty much uh, good as well, but, I mean, like, I like this h5 motif because, okay, we distract yeah. the knight from the exchange, and now we swing the rook to the square where we always um, hope for. Okay. Now knight f3 was played, and finally here actually it was time for um, black to execute. All right, so here. Yeah. So we need to bring queen over, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't want to exchange queens. Well, depends. I mean, sometimes, of course, you're right not to exchange the queens when the king is weak, but if you gain material, why not? Okay. Um, all right, so we can play queen a3, and after the exchange, we have this, this pawn on c3 is bound to fall. We can mm -hmm. also squeak, yeah. swing rook over to the g file if we need to. Yes, he played queen a3 because he's winning a pawn. Because yeah. if you take, take and play, for example, like rook c1, I have rook b3. So yeah. this doesn't bear um, black yeah. at all. Yeah. And yeah. otherwise, I have knight takes c3 as a threat. Okay. After queen a3 in the game, he played knight g5. Now uh, knight takes c3 was played. He captured here on a3, rook c1, and he already moved the knight to b5, aiming that after taking on e3, the d4 pawn is hanging too. Knight takes f7 was played, rook takes e3, and after knight e5, another prophylactical move against knight d7, which was king yeah. c7. Then sooner or later, he took on d4 and won the game for us, not so important important anymore okay very good this was um what winnick in exploiting strong squares yeah I think playing against bot Finnick must have felt like being strangled by a python by a python <laughs> yeah sometimes we had this really like uh, amazing games i studied bot winnick myself a lot i'm just looking for the ah uh, yes i found we get back to our favorite guy, Geller. Ah, good. Um, I don't know if I mentioned this, Bob. I, I never mentioned this to Lizzie, but I don't know if I did uh, uh, mention this. Um, I have a story from my a family friend was telling me this happened in the 60s when I was just a child, mm -hmm. that Geller would come to Belgrade, and obviously Soviet Union was... Uh, a superpower but not a wealthy country so they had per diems when they were visiting and he would basically play against uh, uh, usually prominent people from belgrade for you know basically for odds and for money 
and he routinely used to beat them with rook odds. And I remember my family friend who was, um, who was actually very good. He was an expert level player and I, I think he never, um, he was very surprised that he would lose a game against anyone with the rook odds. But yes, he lost games against Geller with rook odds. So anyway, that's... Oh, you that. mentioned actually the story in, uh, in I, I think last Thursday. If I I'm did? Not... All right, sorry. I, I no, like no, Geller. No. So I'm a, Geller is white or black? Yeah, Geller is white and you are to move and you have to find the right move here. For Geller, okay. Anyway... Okay. All right. Unless you have seen that game. I haven't. I haven't done that. Okay. All right. So no checks. No meaningful captures. Material is equal. Huge lead in development for white. A little bit of an advantage in space. Um, I mean, if I'm in a bullet game, I'm just uh, playing G4 as a matter of automatism. Yes, but actually, like in this kind of King's Indian structures, I mean, like when you usually attack with Bishop h6, h4, h5, then in the most scenarios, actually, it is a close center with a pawn on d5. Yeah, yeah, in this looks like a Samish King's Indian with an exchange, so. But here we have a totally different kind of, let's say, King's Indian structure. And here, actually, to play the plan with Bishop h6, h4, h5, Unless you're very sure you're mating, the exchange, especially of these two bishops, can be crucial in terms of the control of the black squares later on. Yes. And you wouldn't be showing me this position if that was what was played. So let's see. Okay. All right, so I learned recently that one of common motives in King's Indian is to play c5. Very good. This is a kind of must-know move because especially yeah. if you play King's Indian with black, you should have faced that move a couple of times. Yeah. Of course, c5 here is a motive. And actually before um like in this game before now we had this moment of c5 the last thing of white was d takes e5 d takes e5 in order then to play c5 yeah. so this is a kind of pattern you should always take attention to especially since you play the king's indian for black yeah i learned this from wgm laura unuk actually <laughs> okay uh, there are some benefits uh, she actually plays a different line. Kinsey. And actually, all Chiquitas play, play this, and uh, there are some advantages to play 20 adoption matches against very strong players. Yeah, I, I, yeah, you, that's, I'm actually familiar with the pattern. Mm -hmm. So now C5 was played, Knight F8, and the next move actually is, um, in my opinion, very strong, but you have to really like um, ask yourself the right questions in order to really like get to the point of this move. Okay. It's so tempting to just play knight d5. Knight d5. Uh, it's, I, I'm not saying I'm playing the move, it's just so tempting, it doesn't work. No, I know, but you know what is funny, like when you have, like, there are a lot of players and they cannot change their spirit, they have, like, huge positional advantage, but still they have this kind of erg inside oh, themselves. No, no, of course. Create a tactical mess. No, 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 no need. 
And after all, your nickname is Miss Messi last time I checked. So. I know, but the thing is, like, usually I mess from the early stage. But once I have positional advantage, I can play super boring chess too. No, no, I, I know, I know. And, I, and I'm not saying I'm suggesting that no, I'm going to play. <laughs> all right, so what do we want to do here? We want to park a knight on d6. Sooner or later, yes. So we need knight a5, knight c4 patterns, of course. Yeah. Um, does is it beneficial for us to park the knight on b6, which we can actually do fairly quickly? Yes, we can, of course, aim for that. And this is, of course, not a bad move, knight a4. But here, actually, like, um, Geller was asking himself, well, in a way, if you look at all the Plax pieces, what is the best Plax piece in this position? In terms of keeping still, like, some stability and things together. Hmm. Okay, we have knight f6, which is kind of not going anywhere. Nope. We have rook on e8, which is not going anywhere. So that leaves the queen. Hmm. But I don't want to exchange queens in a position in which I have this much positional advantage. Right. But actually, like you exchange the queens when, um, well, here the king of uh, black is not weak. But if you exchange the queens, you get access to a5. b7 gets a lot weaker, and all the black squares are collapsing. Okay. Then we're going to do, then we're going to play queen d6. Yes. Yeah, so basically, like what Gala was thinking, okay, when I get rid of the queens, then actually the black's position is much more shaky because suddenly, like, they lost his best protectors of the black squares. Okay. So this is another exercise of re let's reduce. Uh, don't do automatism. Okay, queen d6 makes sense. Yeah, so queen d6 was played. Now knight e6. And here, of course, um, we have to play another good move. I mean, we have to decide, shall we take on c7 or shall we allow the capture on d6? What is more beneficial for us? Well, if you're taking on c7, our next move needs to be on a4 to prevent that knight from coming to b5. Um, the question here is now... All right, so the sequence is we make a move black can play bishop d7 or rook d8 and he can actually force that exchange no he can't because the rook is hanging i mean the queen actually, cannot he can yeah sorry yeah sorry lizzie the queen cannot disappear if you capture now we actually help black because yeah. okay if the knight takes c7 the bishop on c8 he would technically could go out there's knight b5 yeah. ideas Agreed. so we are not on the run or rush yeah we're not in a rush so we can improve our position what's the best way to improve our position we we can connect the rooks i don't like bishop c4 because that's kind of a space i have eyeing for the knight well for now yes but actually after bishop c4 you sort of force the queen exchange because bishop takes e6 and bishop takes ah, f7 fair enough yeah so then play bishop c4 yeah, bishop c4 happened in the game. Now bishop f8. Here he took, he took, and now the next white move is kind of important. And what always helps is, of course, to understand what black wants to do in this position in the next move. Oh, yeah, I mean a4, right? Uh, well, I mean, knight b5 here can be answered by knight a4. So, I mean, like, then the knight would be on b5, but not doing too not much. Doing much. Okay. Okay. Hmm? Understood. So, okay. So let's get the knight to let's get the knight to b six. So knight a four. And once again, what black wants to do here? I mean, we have a position, Nicola, with space advantage. When we have a position with space advantage, what is always helpful for the side who lacks to space? To exchange pieces. 
So what is the threat here of the exchange? Uh, bishop e6. Yes, so let's do something prophylactical against bishop e6, not to get him out and to connect the rooks voluntary. Okay. Um, we're talking about, we are going to do rook d6. Well, rook d6, we don't sacrifice here when we are better. No, we can't do but that. But what prevent bishop e6? Uh, well, we can... We can attack the knight. We can play bishop g5. Okay, after bishop g5, of course, this would for now, for one move, prevent this, and bishop e7 is coming. But okay, I mean, like, this is not very harmonic in terms of bringing the bishop now to g5 for a one time threat, bishop e7. Then we even can try to threat the exchange of the bishops, which is even helpful for black. But actually, look at all your pieces. Which piece? No, no, no I, I understand. Uh, mm -hmm. The we want to play knight a five yes. because that pacify that basically makes that poor bishop tied up to the defense of b seven. Yes. Also, at some point, then when actually those bishops are exchanged, the knight is already perfect. Go to c four. Yep, I understood. So rook b8 was played, now knight a4 happened, and after bishop e6, he simply captured on e6, knight takes e6, and played knight c4, getting both his knights in positions. Now in the, uh, in the game, actually, knight c7 was played, and, well, I will ask you a question very soon. Knight b6 happened in the game knight e6 and b4 and now the question is after knight f4 how to proceed here okay all right if we exchange uh, we are opening a long diagonal for the bishop, black bishop Yes, so there's no need now. So to no need to do no that. Need. We can yeah. just we can just play. I I mean, we can just play g3. Okay, but let's look at g3. We weaken our like structure on the king side, and actually, like here in this position, let's skip the fact that g2 is hanging. What would have been your next two moves, just by logical means? Uh, knight d6. Okay, knight d6 is, an, is of course like an option, but um, let's not speak about the pieces which are good. Let's speak about the pieces which are sleeping. All right, we're talking about rook on h1 then, right? Yeah, we talk about, well, we have an open file. We should exploit it and get our rooks on that open okay. file. No, 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 understood. Uh, and that's something I need to learn, actually. Um, Rook d2 combines prophylaxis and future, yes, future doubling of the rooks without thinking about it. And interestingly, I actually make this error rather frequently in my games, so thank you for that. Yeah, 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 that makes perfect sense. Yeah, so I mean, like when you can basically like prevent a problem in an, in the same moment, improve your position, of course, this is preferable than some it kind of automatic should be an automatic move. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Rook d8. Now rook um, d1, mm -hmm. the rooks were exchanged and bishop g7 was played. And here actually like Geller found a very nice sequence of three moves to transform this position into a winning ending without any chances. So the question is now what kind of sequence he did in order to, well, easily win the game or end up in a winning um, ending without any chances. Hey, Turkey Tech, thank you for the follow. And Aduzinsing, Aduzins SG, thank you for the follow too. Very greatly appreciated. Thank you, guys. Okay, so... All right, let me think here for a second. All right, so 
now captures that makes sense uh thank you rory rl thank you for the follow very greatly appreciate it it's actually royal uh, oh it's a it's a tongue twister thank you all right so we can play knight i can play knight d6 and threaten the strongest piece the strongest piece okay knight d6 with the idea of hitting on b7 and rook b8 has to be played right yes what is the drawback placing the knight on d6 what do you think it's kind of in the way of the of the well of the rook right the rook, yes i mean what options do we have to basically hit on b7 we don't only have knight d6 what else do we have we have knight a5 yes it's which, which is, is better, actually which better. Is a better move yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I after see. knight a5 I mean, the only way here of not losing on the spot is rook b8 because rook e7 would result in rook d8 actually, and then I can even like take on a four, play rook b8 and take the pawn. Yeah. So now rook b8, and here like Geller found two more moves basically, which just makes black. I mean, on the higher level, let's say, just resign. Yeah, we can actually here, I think we can even play knight d7 and still win. I mean, like knight d7 is, of course, a pattern. What is the only problem about playing knight d7 in this moment? Uh, the problem with knight d7 is the rook d8. No, this is not a problem because we can exchange. But what is the only problem in white's camp in terms of unprotected pieces? It's the g2 pawn. Yes, so what you think Geller did first? Before... He, probably, he played g2 for g3 first. No, actually, he didn't play g3 first. He exchanged because he... on f4. He exchanged on f4 because this is just game over and played knight d7. You can resign. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Because if he plays g3, actually, the knight can come to e6. Then there are knight d8 motifs. And okay, like black is still yeah. fighting a bit. And here with the elimination of just the last pieces um, he just switches into a winning position rook d8 was played he captured he captured and he yeah, captured this is game over. ending easily yeah i'll win this against the uh, stockfish yeah so this was the nice sequence here in terms of um yeah Geller finishing the game Okay, now we go into your best section, which is the dynamic section. Yay. I would say, let's start with an easy one, at least for me, but I think it will be easy for you as well. I'm always nervous when Lizzie says easy. Yes, you are black here and obviously you have a King's Indian structure and you should now from this moment on try to play the game. Okay, so I'm actually reasonably familiar with this line. This is a kind of modern defense, but what happened here is actually quite familiar, especially if you are a King's Indian player, this choice here of what to do with black should come natural. Okay. Uh, hey, Calibre 61 thank you. Thank you for those kind words. They mean a lot. Yes. Okay, so the material is equal. Mm hmm The which since h5 he hasn't played the traditional lines here do not make much sense like which is moving knight on f6 and playing f5 or at least not immediately All right. yes so the question is just okay for now what to do with a knight playing knight e7 playing knight b8 playing knight d4 playing what Okay. Uh, 
In this position, that knight belongs on c5. That would be a very long way. Yeah, but we don't have... We don't have that option. So, knight e7 is kind of passive. Mm -hmm. So, I think the, you know, uh, I'm, you know, my fighting kings in the chessable course may even have this position, I don't remember. So, yeah, you need to play knight d4 here. Yes, of course. So knight d4, we sacrifice a pawn in terms of getting um, dynamic play. Besides that, white hasn't yet castled, so this is, of course, also like coming along. So after knight d4, I actually should give my notation. I know the game almost by heart, but only almost. So um, this was, by the way, Smyslov is black. So after knight d4, he took, he took, and queen takes d4. And now it's the next move by black. As I said, you should try to continue playing just like Smyslov in his old style back in 65. Okay. Okay. Well, the obvious move... Is. The best move is to remove the knight, play something like knight g4. Knight g4 is one option, but okay, Nicola, like we now sacrifice the pawn, we have the bishop pair, and of course, knight g4 is a kind of like say one term threat. I play queen d2, then I castle, and okay, we are pawn down. And in order, like to really activate all your pieces, we should sure. always try to aim opening the position and preferable no, I'm not, yeah i'm not threat. saying i'm playing knight g4 i'm saying that's an option um okay just to make sure lizzie definitely kills me i'm gonna suggest knight h7 i'm kidding <laughs> but actually like, I'm, I'm kidding i know but for you as a king's indian player this move actually is kind of automatic and if i would ask you now like what is white's benefits in this position yeah. i'm sure you come along with what is actually beneficial about white's position because there's only one beneficial part apart from the fact that i'm a pawn up yeah it's uh, it's the, that knight on g5 is very strong well this is actually not True, because a knight on g5 has a good position, but doing nothing. So it's an active knight without function. Okay. I mean, I've actually played... Um, I've played this position plenty of times, and I never liked it. They're just playing h5 just feels unnatural. Um, yeah. If you look at the pawn structure... We're actually... looking at a strong pawn center. And mm -hmm. that's one of the key benefits of playing Semish uh, or whatever the line this is. Anyway, it's not Semish, but it uh, feels almost like Semish. It's like a modern, actually, the classical yeah. modern, uh, it was with um, some kind of knight c6 e5 plan. But okay. now, I mean, the benefit for white is usually, especially in all the king's Indian, is the space advantage and the pawn on d5, which actually somehow squeezes black a little bit in. And here with the queen on d4, this is an excellent moment of getting rid of this issue. Okay. Yeah. So the motive here, and actually I need to learn how to play these positions because um, I don't like them. We are, what I think Liz is saying, that we should consider playing c5? No, not c5, actually c6, c6. because okay. with c6, we have a threat. The first threat is knight takes d5. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, like, suddenly, like, I get my queen out on the other diagonal, and, of course, my trump card is this monster bishop on the diagonal g7a1. Yeah. So we increase the pressure on the black squares, and 
The good part is that, I mean, white is not in time here to do something else but to take on c6, because if, for example, he plays queen d2, I'm already taking, and after you take, okay, I mean, this d5 gets very weak. I have bishop f5, rook e8, rook c8, queen b6. Oh, yeah. No, this is, this is a very nice position for black. I mean, black cannot, uh, white cannot, uh, like, um, be careless and lose time. So after c6, he should try to always play also in the fourth manner in order to actually um, get at least his king in safety. So he played castle here. Next move, Nicola. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. If I was white, I would never short castle in this position, but that's that's me. Okay, but what else would you do here, actually? Because, okay, there are, like, plenty of threats. I mean, yeah. there's one big threat in this position already. Yeah, it's the knight d5 is scary. Knight d5 is... Uh, I mean, that's why you should castle already, because anyway, you cannot prevent knight d5 coming. Yeah, okay. So the question is, after white castles, is that still a strong move? It is because, okay, after knight e5 here, I mean, probably like um, white, which was some Mr. Vade was um, choosing wrong here. He should have gone for queen d2, but maybe he was too much concerned or like too much bound to his material advantage. So after the capture, capture, and let's say moves like queen a5, of course, there is a huge compensation, but maybe not enough here for black to really prove something. And that's why queen d2 was important to guard the square on f4. But white was a bit greedy and he decided to play queen c4, also like aiming for some kind of pawn attacking on e6, but this was badly punished. Next move by what, uh, not by Smyslov. Knight f4. Knight f4, and the trick is now, of course, here we see the pattern of the kind of dependence. So they are kind of motifs, just like um, bishop takes c3 and d5 in the air. And here after knight f4, maybe the best choice was for white to play bishop f3 to avoid any tactics after rook b8. Still, like black has huge dynamic compensation. But White was greedy and captured on c6. Now, actually, after the capture on c6, what did Smyslov do? Doesn't, isn't the piece immediately lost? Take on c3? Well, he took on c3. It's not yet so easy because I don't capture back on c3. I don't capture on a8 because, okay, I can then take on e2 and take on b2. He played bishop f3 as he still has the double attack remaining. Still, okay. of course, black found a good way to continue. Okay. All right. Uh, so rook is hanging and bishop, yeah, bishop is hanging. Is also hanging yes so what is the best you can get from this you cannot anyway save them both all right all right so i'm up a piece so i have a piece to give Yes, but what is the best scenario here? How to give back material? All right, so I don't want to take on B2. Why not? Do I? I mean, this is like at least we get like a pawn. If you take on A8, I take on A1. But anyway, I will always lose that bishop. If I play rook B8 and I lose a bishop on C3, I don't get a pawn. Okay. No. So that's why it takes me two just by counting the material. It is, it's a bit irritating. I agree because I also thought like bishop takes me two is bad, but it's actually the same. Okay, I was looking at queen or bishop a six, but I think yeah, bishop b two is better. 
Fair enough. Yeah, so bishop takes b2 was played. Now um, queen takes a8, bishop a1, rook a1. And here, of course, Smyslov found a very strong idea. What would you play here? <laughs> okay. All right. That night. All right, we can. We don't want to exchange queens in this position. No, but we have something very strong here in this we can position. Play queen f6. Which is a one term threat. Think a little bit like, okay, look at all the white pieces. What should like catch our attention? Yeah, this queen is almost trapped. So let's go. Uh -huh. Let's go, queen trapping. Yes, queen, queen b6. b6. And then queen c7 because queen c7 allows rook b1. But queen b6 actually like has a very simple threat: bishop b7 and game over. Yeah. So white pushed e5 in order to prevent this game over threat with bishop b7. What would you play after e5? Okay, I can, I can capture an e5 and have an extra pawn, but something tells me that's not, the, that's not what works here. That's it's, not a vicious way of thinking. No, it's not. Um, hmm. Uh, can we just play d5? Yes, very strong. So with d5, actually, once again, we don't allow the queen to get out. And after d5, I mean, um, bishop takes d5 is sort of forced because bishop b7 is one more time the threat. But okay, actually, he didn't play bishop takes d5 because after bishop takes d5, bishop e6 wins on the spot. And we have to be a bit careful because any other moves would result maybe in bishop takes f7. Mm -hmm. So after d5 in the game, he played g3. And now um, here are millions of ways to win. He decided to go for bishop g4. But as I said, this is a free choice actually here, how to continue. And after bishop g4, the queen was sacrificed. And after that, he took here and took here. And okay, queen d4 basically finished the game and the rest for us is not of our concern i would say at least okay. there is no need to go further so now another dynamic position this time with our dear friend nigel short being black pieces <laughs> Why, like, do you know him personally? No. No. Uh, why I can't copy the pen. Uh, <laughs> what is wrong with copying the pen? Let's see if it works now. Yeah, it works. Okay. Nigel was black here and he finished this game in a very beautiful style. Black to move. Okay. Material is equal. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, GM Hannibal Lecter, thank you for the follow. And great, great Twitch handle, by the way. Okay. No checks. I'm a capture on d4. Yeah, maybe this is a bit too much of a sacrifice. I would dare to claim. I would agree with you. Oh. We do have a bishop. Like, does he have a bishop pair? 
Mm -hmm. That's already like something where we should always know what are the basic plans having the bishop pair. Okay, so, so we want to open up the position a little bit. So we have one pawn push, which is c5, which is actually quite tempting. Yep. And to open up this gentleman on b7. So the pawn is on d5 is attacked three times and is defended twice. Hmm. So can we play c5 immediately? Okay, we have to know after c5 what happens in case of d takes c5. Okay. I'm going to play d4 and knight g5 and you're going to lose. Yes, your intuition is of course very good for positional play and d4 is the right move because okay, I mean knight takes yeah. c5 doesn't work as d5 is attacked and if queen takes um c5 here actually like i can mm. still try to play knight e2 and get some control of the square on d4 and this is far from over so after c5 i mean in case white doesn't take on c5 play something like g3 then i can actually push c4. c4 and i have like a long-term plan to get basically the guy on a5 so that's why white took and d4 was played now the white um, had to take with the knight, otherwise bishop takes f3, send the air. And here the question is, how would you capture back with the bishop or with the knight? And we are eliminating the rook, right? We are eliminating the rook. Um, how you mean that? Well, you, you offer the bishop or a knight. And, uh, ah, yes, okay. Maybe rook takes d4. Actually, I forgot that I eliminated it. Yes, but uh, yeah, I mean, to sacrifice now, of course, unless there is something. No, we don't need to do that. Though we already sacrificed the pawn, but uh, two pawns. Okay. Uh, hmm. All right, so if we, I think if we capture a bit the, all right, let's look at the sequence first. Capture on d4 with a bishop, takes uh -huh. capture with a knight, fret on f3, takes queen g5 or bet take on f3 with a bishop and that's pretty ugly does that work though mm. it does okay so so i'm capturing with a bishop very good, Nicola, because if you capture with a knight, the problem is that here in this position, you don't have any threats and white has time for b4. Yeah. And it's far from over. If you capture, however, with the bishop first, then you have the motive of knight f3 check. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't allow white to play something like b4. White went king h1. Next move. Okay. Okay, so all right, so we have Queen H four. Yes. We have Knight F three. Yes. And which move looks clearly more scary? Well, Queen H four threatens a mate in two. 
does it queen h4 the threats made in two like how actually knight f3 okay but let's say i play rook cd1 you play knight f3 and i will probably distract you a bit with rook takes d8 fair enough so we're gonna we're gonna prevent that and we're gonna play knight f3 first we can play king yes. h4 later fair enough was knight f3 anyway i mean this is a reason why king h1 was played i mean rook d1 here is just losing because of this queen g5 check patterns and d2 is not protected that's why king h1 knight f3 and here after knight f3 he took on d8 first rook takes d8 and tried still to escape with a kind of small in between move just like c6 because anyway he needs his knight in the kind of defense but here at least he brings the bishop in the same diagonal even so it um didn't uh, why didn't manage to escape here it was his only chance so bishop takes c6 was played knight e2 next move Okay. Interesting. Okay, so let's eliminate that knight. Rook d2, maybe? No. Rook d2, then of course we have to then, be sure that we, we are. Don't worry about rook c6, so yeah. that doesn't work. Okay. If we play bishop d5. Then we actually kill the d file diagonal a little bit. Maybe bishop d5 is winning too. Actually, this move That's, was. Yeah, and queen a3 is then interesting. But... Yes, queen a3 also like to hit on f3 a bit yeah. stronger. So that's actually also not. Um... So that doesn't work either. Mm hmm. If we play queen h4. Which is a good move because you cannot take on um, f3 as simply bishop takes f3 is happening. And then in the worst case, I can take on e2. Even so, I mean, after queen h4, the only move here is g takes f3. In case of h3, I can take on um, f2. If you take on c6, I have rook d1, and you will not swipe that. That's why white captured on f3, and here Nigel found an even more impressive way to continue. However, this is actually almost up to taste. OK. Well, all right. So we can give a check on f3. Yes, that's one option. But after checking on f3, he decided that um, there's maybe still bishop g2 to come. And uh, even so, after bishop g2, there's another winning move, which I also accept if you find it. So if you start with bishop takes f3, how to win on the spot after bishop g2? OK. All no, right. So bishop f3, bishop g2. Mm -hmm. uh, we go. Uh, hey, Aaron, so thank you for the follow. And uh, Stance are golden. Thank you for the follow as well. Very greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, so bishop f3, bishop g2. So what are the candidate moves? We are not going to take the uh, bishop. We are going to, I mean, we can play queen h3. But that might, that runs into knight f4. So that's a problem. OK. So which move would win on the spot after bishop g2? 
we still need to threaten that mate and we can we can probably take on f2 right yes so that's why actually yeah. it doesn't matter if you take first on f2 or first on um uh f3 it's the same here rook takes c6 is just lost because we can't capture on f1 and play rook d1 or even rook d2 yeah. so that's why here in the game after queen takes f2 um knight f4 was played now bishop takes f3 bishop g2 rook d2 and it's game. i mean these packs will not help because i have always g6 so this is not improving much he played rook g1 and after the last next move from nigel actually white resigned what could be here a kind of let's call it once again a sort of sadistic move even though you have a white choice of these moves sadistic move yeah g5 okay g5 is the same actually idea but instead of g5 because okay you cannot really take on f4 because we have a discovery yeah, check. check fair enough so how else to just attack that knight because the bishop on g2 is sort of pinned as there is a mating square on sure. um... you can just play rook d4 hmm? rook d4 well but then actually like i don't uh, thread the mate on oh, h2 no, no, no I, I hear you yeah no, i understand that uh let's just move that bishop away to say a8 or somewhere yes he moved bishop e4 and actually like like uh won the yeah. game because you can have bishop e4 bishop c6 bishop b7 and that is bishop. sadistic move yes this is a typical sadistic final encounter okay so we will continue on the stream next week or yes we can yeah. we can do that uh thank you lizzie thank you guys i hope you have a good time preparing i am still jealous and so let's uh, thank you guys for being here uh, my next stream is on friday at 6 a.m uh, i have a, se a session with alex and then i have open feel the media arena on saturday lastly i think i'm gonna play beth Harmon on on sunday at noon uh, we'll see if chess.com will allow me to create a special account for that anyway let's now the most important question of all who are we going to raid um okay let's see uh you know i don't think i have ever raided ellen nielsen she's a great streamer and a great friend so i'm gonna send you to ellen please give ellen a follow and let's see she is a great lady i actually played a match against her oh actually she is looking at furniture so well uh she's she's actually gonna start playing chess so i'm gonna send you there thank you again i will see you guys next time looking forward to to our to the next stream and thank you for being here and many thanks for chess on earth for all these subs and i will see you next uh friday bye okay nicola then i will see you tomorrow i guess yes we'll see each other yeah. tomorrow thank you enjoy uh, enjoy your training and vacation and thank you this was excellent i greatly appreciate it see you tomorrow See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.